is Miranda. My husband, Zach, and I moved our family out to a homestead um, just over eight acres about two years ago. We have two little girls and they love all the animals and getting to roam around outside. And it is just something that we chose to do for our family. We enjoy the way of life. We enjoy getting um, to source our food just as natural and whole as it comes. So we do things like have a dairy cow and provide all of our own raw milk. And um, we have chickens out here that lay eggs. And so we collect eggs every day. We raise our own meat. So we'll raise chickens for the chicken in the freezer. And so we don't buy chicken at the grocery store anymore. Um, my husband and I both hunt as well. And so that's how we provide a lot of our red meat. Um, this is something that we have just had such a passion for doing and it's grown over the years so we've slowly added in these things and now it's just our way of life uh, we actually lived in a neighborhood before we moved out here and that's where our passion started so we started doing things like making things from scratch in our neighborhood and we had a small raised bed garden and we just fell in love with the process of it and there was nothing sweeter than sitting down at dinner with a plate full of either um, food that you grew, harvested, or um, just sourced from a local community. And that is what it's all about. And so we love, love, love um, getting to spend our evenings outside as a family. Um, we love hard work. And while sometimes we are exhausted, um, we still find it so rewarding and so worth the process and getting to pass down uh, all of this knowledge that we're learning along the way to our kids is something that's really special to us. And so today we're going to show you some of that process, kind of what a day in the life looks like around the homestead. Um, everybody's homestead looks a little bit different. A lot of people raise different animals. Um, so it's fun to get to see what somebody is doing. So Zach and I both still work full time. So he will a lot of times do the chores in the mornings. And then, then whenever I get home from work, a lot of times I'm doing the chores in the evenings. Then on the weekends, we do a lot of our projects and it's all hands on deck. Um, so you'll get to see a little bit of that today. It's just a normal weekday around here. So Zach's going to start us off with some morning chores. And then um, whenever I come home, we'll do some evening chores. I'll do a little bit in the kitchen. Um, to kind of prep and set us up for the rest of the week. I hope you enjoy getting to see a small little glimpse of what our life looks like out here. Good morning, Chris and Rhonda. Good morning, Rocky and Notch. And good morning, Heidi. Heidi is who we're going to milk this morning. Let me get her caught and tied up. and We'll get to milking. All right, so I've got Heidi here. She is tied up. We got a halter on her and a and a rope and a lead rope um, that keeps her still while we milk her. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is brush her. We're gonna get all this dirt and hay and any manure she has on her. She really enjoys getting brushed. Now that her body's brushed, now I'm I'm kind of brushing her undercarriage. Get the same thing, getting all the dirt debris, anything she may have on her, getting that cleaned off of her. Now I'm gonna continue the cleaning process with a wet soapy rag. I'm gonna grab these soapy rags I got and I'm just gonna start cleaning 
off her udders and her teats as best as possible. Again, trying to remove anything that could get into the milk and make the milk either taste bad or, worst case scenario, ruin it and make it not safe for humans to drink. And I'm gonna grab my second rag. And this is just a second layer of cleaning just to make sure we're getting absolutely any contaminant, anything that can contaminate the milk off. Get her nice and cleaned out. Another thing this wet, warm, soapy water does is is it is like a calf so when a calf goes to nurse on her mommy there's a warm mouth and it's wet with the saliva and that that tells the mommy to to produce more milk and let down more milk well these wet rags do the same thing all right and the last step is i'm going to take this dry rag and this is for a little bit of udder health if you were to try to milk now with with wet hands and wet udders you would create blisters because there'd be too much friction and you would give, give the cow blisters. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure we take care of Heidi here. So I'm getting her as dry as possible so that way I'm ready to milk. And now that she's all dry, before I put the milk pail under here, I'm going to give a couple of pulls just to clean out that very bottom milk, that milk that may have been sitting right in the bottom of her udder all night long and maybe that could potentially have some contaminants again we're trying to create safe milk here so humans can drink it all right now she's all cleaned we've got her cleaned up i'm going to take my stainless steel milk pan and milk and see how much milk we get this morning So I've got two different things I'm doing here. So there's two methods of it, and I do both. The first thing is called stripping. So it's when you pinch off as high as you can, up as tight to the animal as you can, and you squeeze and pull that milk out. I use this technique at the very beginning and the very end. The very beginning to try to get the milk flowing, and at the very end to get every last drop we can out of her. There's also a pinch off here, then I use the whole hand to squeeze milk out. And so I just kind of roll my fingers down nice and it, it happens much faster than that, but I squeeze and then roll. And, that, and that's kind of, I don't have to pull down, I'm just squeezing that milk out of her. So that's the two different ways I milk. Now I'm gonna get back to it. All right, that is all the milk she has to give today. Time to go filter it. All right, while we go inside to process this milk, we're gonna let Notch and Rocky out, these steer calves out. These calves, um, we pin them at night to separate them from our cows. But the beautiful thing about these Jersey cows is not only do they give us a lot of sweet, rich, raw milk, they also raise between two and three calves a year, depending on how we time it. Um, and these calves will be great beef calves. So let's let these out. Uh, not should go and, and, and nurse on Heidi while we go inside and filter the milk. What up, boys? All right, so we took all those steps to clean up Heidi and make sure she was good and clean to make sure no debris got in the milk. However, no morning goes perfect, and sometimes there's always little dirt and dust and grass that still gets in the milk. So we're going to use these little disc filters, and this funnel, this is this funnel specialized for milk filtering. We pop the filter in using that ring, and this goes right over the top of our mason jar. And the mason jars are half-gallon mason jars, and this filter will catch all of the stuff we don't want in our milk. Now the last part is my personal least favorite part, but it's the most important part. We have to wash these things with soap and water to make sure we clean off any bacteria, any germs that may be in there to make sure all this equipment is safe for us to use tomorrow. All right, now that the cows are taken care of, it's time to move on to the chickens. They get that water bucket filling up. 
and also get some broiler feed. This is just an 18% broiler feed from our local co-op. Get on. Got the feed, got the water, and let's go feed the broilers. All right, so I got these chicken tractors moved to new grass. They have uh, fresh grass and fresh bugs to chase along with the feed I'm about to give them. So we move these chicken tractors twice a day, eight and all the manure they lay, but that's actually gonna be really good for our pastures because it's some nitrogen and some fertilizer to our, our pastures and actually helps us. So we feed the chickens, give the chickens something to eat, but they also feed our pastures and give us green grass. With it supposed to be 85 to 88 degrees today, we've got these box fans running. Um, we've had a, a bad problem with the heat in our, our meat chickens. So we're hoping these fans will help us kind of regulate the temperature for them and keep them cool so they can continue to grow and make it to butcher date. Good morning, guys. Good morning, ladies. and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how we do all of our evening chores, take care of animals, and then I'm gonna spend some time in the kitchen tonight getting some stuff prepped because um, I make a lot of things from scratch around here. So I'll show you a little bit of that as well. We're headed down here to do meat bird chores. So these, we are going to be processing actually this week um, to put chicken into our freezer. And so we raise two types of chickens. We raise um, egg laying chickens that are free range. They just kind of go everywhere. They get put up every night. I'll show you when we do that. And then we twice a year are trying to raise broilers. So these are Cornish cross um, chickens and they are raised specifically for their meat so that we can put chicken into our freezer. So I'm going to pull these tractors forward. That gives them some fresh grass to be on. Um, every, twice a day we move the tractors forward. So um, Zach did it this morning. I'm gonna do it this evening and then I'm gonna felt the feeders, get them some uh, water and turn off the fans because um, as the sun sets, they're not gonna need that. So we're just trying to keep them as comfortable as we can in their last few days of life and uh, just trying to keep them all alive and healthy. That way we can uh, get ready to process them later this week, which isn't that fun of a project. It's pretty sad, but it does provide for our family and we know exactly where our chicken comes from. just moved some more of our laying hen chicks out here and um, we put them in the chicken tractor because they're still too little to free range so I'm gonna feed them but we also put them right beside our dogs which might seem kind of silly because we actually have labs which are bird dogs so they don't actually get along with uh, chickens very well but we did it for the chicks safety that way no predators will get them at night the dogs will bark and scare off any predators and the chicks are safe in the tractor uh, to keep them safe from the dogs. So we try to work everything together out on the homestead to where all of our moving parts and our animals help the soil, help us grow things. You can, and our animals help each other out too. Um, and that's kind of how we operate our homestead. So I'm gonna get them fed. We're just gonna lift up this lid.
they are good to go. Watch your head. There you go. You want to go put that up for me? Thank you. So one day, these will get a little bit bigger and start laying eggs for us, too. We just peeked inside the chicken coop and I've been wondering why there haven't been too many eggs. And there's a whole pile of eggs in the corner of the coop. So Palmer's grabbing those and moving them to the basket. And hopefully we don't get pooped on because some of these friends are already roosting up in here. So Palmer's gonna grab those and then we'll take all those inside and then we'll let the chickens come in and close them up. Okay, real quick, we're gonna stop in the garden and I'm gonna show you. We've got broccoli over here, some cabbage, some Brussels sprouts. Do y'all like Brussels sprouts? Some cucumbers, which because it's the fall, these probably won't grow, but we had extra seeds, so we thought we'd try it anyways. And then over here, not doing so well, uh, we also need to weed the garden, but we've got okra, which again, is typically better in the summer, but we had extra seeds, so we tossed them in. And then over here, we have a whole row of spaghetti squash. Um, we love spaghetti squash and it stores really well um, without having to be canned. We can a lot of our vegetables to preserve them, but the spaghetti squash can just lay in the floor and we can eat it later. And then we have some zucchini and some squash over here, just some regular squash. And then over last but not least, on this side, we've got some carrots growing right here in the middle. And um, we need to thin them out and we'll see if we get that many carrots this year. But um, if you can see, we have a lot of weeds and tarps and all the things back here. But in the middle, we've got some good soil and uh, we keep gardening. It's imperfect. We're going to keep going. And whatever little food we get from our garden makes us so happy and we enjoy doing it. And it's so fun for all the kids to get to see the process from planting tiny little seeds into growing big vegetables that we get to eat for dinner. Y'all yeah. saw Zach milk uh, Heidi this morning, one of our dairy cows. We have two dairy cows. One of them is just raising a little calf right now, but next we're gonna go feed them and get them put up for the night. First, we're gonna put the, the baby calves. So Rocky and Notch go in this pen right here. We're gonna feed them a little bit to get them in here. That keeps them from nursing the mama cows at night and that way we can get some milk in the mornings. No, no, Heidi. I'll feed you next. Go out. Heidi always thinks she's starving. Come on, Rhonda. Come on, Chris. Yeah, you can. Just don't get behind the cows. Come on. Over here, Heidi. Come on, Rhonda. I'm gonna get them fed. Got two buckets, one for Rhonda and one for Heidi. Let's see. Sometimes they go up really easy and sometimes they don't. I'm gonna set you right here so I can go dump some feed. Come on. Come on, Chris. That way Chris gets a turn to nurse Rhonda without any competition at night because he's still little. Now we're going to go feed Heidi. I'll take y'all with us. All right, got the cows all put up. Calves separated from Heidi. That way we can milk her in the morning and get milk and then they get the milk the rest of the day. Um, and then Rhonda and Chris are put up together so that Chris can nurse Rhonda. So again, we have lots of animals and they all work together on the homestead. Okay, our last animal to take care of tonight is our dogs. So we're gonna let them out of their kennel, let them run around and play and stretch their legs for a while. 
and then uh, we'll put them to bed and we'll actually put our female dog all the way down there by the meat birds. That way she can, I moved that kennel close to the chicken tractor. Are they loud? Um, that way she can kind of alert us if any predators come out to the meat birds. So they're gonna, she's gonna keep watch down there. And then our male dog, Gus, he's gonna keep watch of these chickens tonight. I forgot one animal and that's the chickens. And that's cause they put themselves up at night when the sun goes down. And then we just come in here and close the door and everybody's up on their roost and ready for bed. And then we'll hear the rooster crow when the sun comes up. <laughs> we're done with our chores. So we're gonna head in, grab a little bit of dinner real quick. And then uh, I'm gonna feed some sourdough starter. Really quick before I close up the shop tonight, I'll show y'all. What is in here? We have some chicken feet, so I can make some chicken broth. We have some bones for more broth. We also have all of our whole chickens. And so this is what we use to eat. We don't buy chicken at the grocery store. We come out here to the shop in our freezer and grab chicken uh, to thaw for dinner. And then in this freezer is all of our deer meat. So we don't buy a lot of red meat at the store either. We hunt for a lot of our um, red meat. So we've got ground meat down here. Here, will you carry that? You can hold the top. And we've got steak cuts, roast, anything that we need is in here. Um, and it is deer season right now, which is why our freezer is looking a little empty. Normally this is full. So um, Mr. Zach and I are hunting, trying to fill the red meat freezer again. Thank you. That was the animals. So we're gonna shut up the um, barn and go inside. To finish off the night, I am going to feed my sourdough starter. This is what we use to make all of our bread. So we don't buy bread at the grocery store. We actually just make it all from scratch here. So I'm gonna get a clean jar. I'm gonna use a kitchen scale. And I'm gonna use some of my old sourdough starter. This has been in the fridge for a little while. So I'm gonna kind of revive it. And I'm gonna put about 50 grams or so in this clean jar. And I'm gonna feed it about 50 grams of flour. And right before I bake with it, I'm actually gonna feed it a lot more. So I'm gonna do this little feed tonight. And then tomorrow, before I want to bake bread, I'm gonna feed it a good bit more of flour and water and get it to bubble all the way to the top. It'll double or triple in size. So I'm also gonna do about 50 grams of water, maybe a little less than. And this, I'm just gonna stir it, mix it all together and then set it aside to rest for tonight and it is going to grow. And this is how we make bread at our homestead so that we don't have to go to the grocery store to buy bread. Okay, really quickly, we're gonna go on a little tour of our homestead kitchen. Um, so this is my favorite corner. It has my mixer, which I make a lot of things over here. This is how I bake. This is also where I set my sourdough starter that we just fed at night so that it can rise and bubble. I have salt, garlic, all my utensils over here. We cook with cast irons a whole bunch around here. Um, and then let me show you something else. So this little shelf down here is where we have a lot of our canned goods. So things that come out of our garden, like tomatoes, we can. So out of these canned tomatoes, we can make our pizza sauce and spaghetti sauce. We can make soups and chilies. We have pickles, carrots, barbecue sauce, lots of stuff down here that we worked really hard to put up in a can. It wouldn't be a full day in the life without some sort of project going on. Zach is back here building some arrows because we are about to leave on a hunting trip. So he's actually building me some arrows uh, tonight. Thank y'all so much for joining us today on our homestead, getting to do some chores 
with us a little bit along the way. Again, this is a small glimpse of what it looks like. It is a lot of hard work, but this is just an average weekday for us. Um, so no major projects. We do have the chickens um, that are gonna be butchered later this week. I need to still make bread later this week. So a lot of what we did today is prep work for the rest of our week and how that goes. But I'm so glad that y'all um, got to hang out today and I hope that you enjoyed um, seeing a little bit of the process.